Welcome back to another video. Today it's the League One predictions. Let me know yours in the comments down below. One to twenty-four or twenty-four to one. It's 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 just one of those again. I did my championship predictions yesterday. Um, if you haven't watched that, you can go and watch it. But it's definitely that time of year where you make yourself look like a bit of an idiot. Um, because when we acted this back in May, uh, June maybe. And uh, I'll get so many of them wrong, but it's just the impossible job. It's like the England job. You just can't succeed in it. You've got no chance of predicting them all of them right, and you've got a lot of you've got a very good chance of upsetting a lot of people. So sorry if I offend you. Sorry if I predicted your team to get relegated. Sorry if I predicted your team not to get promoted when it's to a requirement. It's just my prediction. It's just a bit of fun. Let me know yours in the comments down below, um, and get involved in the fun. Um, it, it's it's definitely. It's it's so hard to do. It's so hard to predict the the teams. It's so hard to, you know, go through the transfers, go through the squads, go through the good reasoning, and it, it's hard to actually put some teams in the relegation zones or teams outside of playoffs who you might have a bit of a soft spot for sometimes, or you might like their manager, or, or there might be a, a reason, but you just have to define it, and uh, it, it is so hard to do. So we'll get started off then with twenty fourth place. I've got Northampton. Again, I want them to stay up. I'm really impressed with Brady and the core of the Northampton team. Injuries did nearly destroy their promotion last year and, and, and nearly dropped into a playoffs if they didn't sort of limp over the line. And with not a lot of recruitment, it's hard to see those same recurring injuries just disappear. It'll be interesting to see how Hoskins adapts to League One and other of the um, main uh, players who, who were part of that promotion winning team. Um, but only Patrick Bruff is a probably star signing and that there's still a lot of work to be done for Northampton to stay in League 1 so that's uh, why I've got them bottom of League 1 um, going into this season like I said there's still a month left of the transfer window so there's still loads of business to be done so it is extremely hard to predict this but Cheltenham I've got in 23rd a again you know it it's tough to predict this but Ray Elliott it's his second season but first without Talisman Alfie May, we all know how good of a player he's been for Cheltenham over the years. It'll be a massive test of his coaching and managerial ability, and whilst they were resolute and solid defensively, and additions of Curtis Davis will only strengthen that area, their highest goal scorer below Alfie May only contributed six goals last season, the others chipped in with two and ones. And that's just not good enough if you want to stay in the division. 20 plus goals is too hard to replace for me for Cheltenham, and they will massively struggle this league one. Season 22nd, I've got Cambridge United. I'm very much impressed with Mark Bonner's early but great start in management, gaining promotion from League Two to League One with that Cambridge squad, then keeping their League One status at the first time of asking, and then losing Nibs and Smith and not really replacing them adequately in this transfer window. I can only see relegation, unfortunately, for Cambridge United. Then in 21st, making my relegation fourth spot is Port Vale. Solid recruitment leads links for improvement for Vale with signings like Ch Chislet, Grant, Ripley, all signings for optimism for Vale but build to build on last season. By having sacked Dow Clark at the end of last season, replacing him with his understudy if you like, although he's one of the oldest managers in the division in Andy Crosby and a challenging start to a season with a lack of goals in the forward areas leaves question marks over Port Vale this season and I think they are going to struggle because of the lack of goals, they might get a few clean sheets and it really does depend for me on when to pull the club, uh, pull the plug on Andy Crosby unless he can prove me wrong. I hope he can, I hope I, I get all them four teams wrong, I don't want to see them go down, relegation is the hardest part of football but if we didn't have it, it would just be like the MLS or the Super League and we certainly don't want that. 20th place then, staying up just by the skin of the teeth, I could have quite easily put these in instead of Port Vale, is Exeter City. Now, they're just avoiding the drop, it's a big drop off by Exeter. Um, Gary Caldwell's one of the main reasons, he's a proven manager, more proven than Andy Cros Cros Crosby. This is also Exeter City's second season with both teams being promoted from League 2 in 2021-22, their man Port Vale. But it's Exeter who have looked more accustomed to life in League 1. With key departures, I see a big drop-off. Key gone, Blackman gone, Collins gone, Sparks and Caprice all gone. And no clear signings that suggest improvement. I see a tough year for Exeter. 19th place, Shrewsbury. Another massive but sort of expected drop-off this season is Shrewsbury. 
like Port Vale, mainly down to the sacking of their former managers. In Shrewsbury's case, Steve Cotwell is a sacking. Um, but it's just more bizarre than uh, than, than that one of Darrell Clark. And it's probably the most bizarre sacking from last season. Did a great job, got them towards the playoffs. But they've appointed Matt Taylor, and I have little hope for Shrewsbury. I have a lot. I have little hope that they'll do anything, but I, I hope that they do stay in the division. Morgan Feeney's probably their star signing, with other good signings like Winchester and Kenny. And let's not forget, they still have um, a good core, but they have lost Leahy and Pennington. So it's going to be a tough season for Shrewsbury, but I think they'll just have enough to survive. But there's got to be questions asked at the top for why they sat Cottrell and why they've replaced him with Matt Taylor. 18th, I've got Carlisle United. There's a bit going on with Bradford City and Carlisle United at the minute. I'm not too sure why, um, but I think it's caused by the Carlisle fans. No, I'm all jokes aside. I, I, I did like Carlisle last season. Paul Simpson did a great job, uh, but he's the second team we're talking about from League Two, so I've got a lot of um, optimism going into the season for the League Two teams that were promoted. Um, if I told a Carlisle fan that they would be... Uh, fighting to, to stay in League One this season and I predicted them that they were, were to stay in League One when Paul Simpson got appointed they'd have probably laughed they'd have thought they were living in a fantasy um, you know they, they were tipped to get relegated last season when he came in he saved them from relegation that season keeping Orin Moxon is massive for Carlisle hopefully they can keep him and it will make my prediction look a bit better he's a great box to box dynamic midfielder he was probably the best in League Two last year he's key to Carlisle and also they've recruited good players who suit the system like Butterworth and Sam Lavelle. For me, they are improvements on Patrick and Morgan Feeney. 17th, another League Two, uh, another former League Two club is Stevenage. Again, Steve Evans came in, they were down towards the bottom of League Two. To be fair, I did expect them to be towards the top end, unlike Carlisle when he came in. They've recruited really well, bringing in a bag of solid League One players that will reflect Steve Evans' style of play. Hard to beat, gritty, direct, accustomed players bringing in three of the Thompson, Lewis, Nathan and Ben. And they've created other solid signings such as Butler, Freeman and Harry Anderson. I think they've brought in three or four Peterborough players as well. So he's uh, sniping them up from his former club. But really good recruitment from Stevenage and they are going to be one of those teams that no one wants to play against. But um, it's effective, and that's what all that counts. I'm sure Stevenage fans won't care. 17th place, I've got them coming. 16th place, I've got Fleetwood Town, a very difficult team to predict because I like some of their signings, like Danny Mayer, Bagley, who got 11 assists in 23 games in Ireland last season. Ryan Broom and M Montgomery, also good signings. However, there are some off lit field issues surrounding the Fleetwood owner somewhere around an arrest, I'm not too sure about it, so if you're a Fleetwood fan, let me know in the comments down below, and educate me on that, hopefully it doesn't involve a point deduction, and hopefully they can get another solid, sort of mid-table finish for Scott Brown's side. 15th place, I've got Leighton Orient, maybe I am a bit too optimistic around the newly promoted teams from League 2, but I do like the look of Leighton Orient, I like a lot of the signings, but last season they were incredible football inside in League 2, when they, were, when they were having an off day, when it wasn't quite their day, they were still blowing teams apart with the football. The test for Wellens is if you can do it in a higher division in League 1. Did it with Swindon, blew, blew it apart in League 2, didn't quite succeed at League 1. But he's definitely been given the foundations to do that later now, bringing in players like Piggott from Ipswich, Galbraith, Sanders, and bringing in El Mazzuni back are all vitally key signings. Dan Adji could also be a great signing with time. I don't think he's quite League One level yet, but really good recruitment by Leighton Orient, and I think they'll have a very solid season back in League One. 14th place, I have got Wigan. I think it's probably a safe prediction. Probably um, higher than I've seen a few others. I don't think they'll be in a relegation battle. I don't think they'll be getting relegated. That's for sure, unless I do get more point deductions, but I don't think that'll be the case either. Um, but I don't think they'll be quite towards the playoffs. I think they'd have come somewhere near the playoffs, and that's why I'm predicting 14 for the point deduction they'll get. Off-field issues obviously a huge problem, and they need to resurrect that, but they have got a good youth set up. They've brought in some pretty decent players. Johnny Smith's an excellent signing. Maloney's done a decent job when he's come in, under tough circumstances, but I, I think 14 d decent place finish for Wigan with the point deduction, something to build on, and um, you know hopefully there's no more point deductions coming Wigan win. They can try and rebuild something that's there. 
13th place, I've got Wickham from one W to the next. I think I'm not convinced with Bloomfield, to be honest, but I will give him another go because last season he was trying to play brand of football, but the players he had at his disposal weren't able to do. So with time, with pre-season, with bringing in a few of his own players and he's brought in a lot of his own players, a few younger ones as well, it will take time to transition, it will take time to rebuild Wickham. And obviously they're going from, it's like, you know, when, you know, Arsenal, Man United transition from Wenger and Alex Ferguson, it takes time. And it's very similar, but just at a lower scale with Wickham. It's going to be a roller coaster over a year. I think they might be towards the playoffs at some point, maybe down towards the bottom at some point. But ultimately, I've got them ending in mid-table. 12th, for me now, this is where the playoffs uh, chases are. 12th to 6th, anyone could finish anywhere. And it was so hard to predict... I think this is the hardest place to predict in League One this season. So open in this area, but I've gone with Lincoln just. Um, like I say, it's open in regards to mid-table and playoffs, but they are just about the weakest team for me. Some of the outgoings are going to be huge misses like Regan Poole and Scully after his loan ended. They still have a good call with some good, good, good signings, but I just think that they're not going to... They just don't have the levels for me that other challengers have. And obviously, uh, Mark Kennedy's Lincoln side last season did struggle against the bottom half of the division. If they can resurrect that, they might be able to get more of a challenge towards the playoffs, but I'm not too convinced that they will be able to. Bristol Rovers, I like what Joey Barton is building. Brought in again some very astute players who know how to play his style of play at home. Their fans are going to be a key factor. Like I say, I think these teams are all going to be in the race for the playoffs, but when it comes down to the last bit of quality, I think Rovers are just lacking at this moment in time, but again, some good signings. Barnsley in 10th. Barnsley are one of the hardest teams to predict. It's really tough to judge Collins so early on. Coming over from America could be a tough challenge to adapt to managing in English football. Obviously, he's played in the division. Um, it's a tough for, uh, the, the toughest loss for Barnsley is Michael Duff. And it might take time to adjust. I don't know how he's going to set up. He could set up maybe a defensive fashion, maybe a high press like Michael Duff. But it, it will take time to adapt, I think. Still a lot of the core players there. They've, they, they are losing a couple of big players, the main one being Mads Anderson. Um, but I think 10th place for Barnsley, a, an adjustment season, I think. And it'll be interesting to see how they do set up and do. Again, sorry if I pre slightly predicted you a bit lower than you were expecting. Ninth, Reading. Um, again, another tough team to predict. Loads of background chaos for years now. Last season's point production pretty much got them relegated. Then, hopefully they don't get any more. Because, um, you know, they seem to be turning a corner one minute, Reading. And then the next, there's another point production. Now they're in a transfer embargo after bringing in four good players, really, for League One. And they didn't really expect them to come down to League One and bring in these type of players that are League One standard quality. Snatching Smith and Nibs off Cambridge, a very, um, very good signing. Savage coming in and Wing are very good additions. So in the end, with the background chaos, a new manager that's unproven and we don't know much about, and more additions needed, but probably ne not necessarily going to be able to come in. I've opted with ninth place for Reading. Eighth, I've got Peterborough. Last season ended in extraordinary circumstances for Peterborough in that playoff couple of games. The first leg, obviously, the one three nil blue. Sheffield Wednesday out of the park, um, really good performance. Then Sheffield Wednesday had to get a, at least a four-goal lead against Peterborough. They got that, and then they scored a last-minute winner to achieve the best-ever finish in the players of all time. After the game, Ferguson said if he stays on at Peterborough, he wanted to go young and revamp um, the squad in the summer. Um, young day have gone. I mean, the average age of the signings is 22.1. And the average age of departures is 27.6. His promise has certainly been kept. It's an hard challenge for those young players who are going to be coming into a very young team and very young surroundings, but high expectation with Peterborough. That's the standards that they have set. Um, but I, I have no doubt that they are going to be good standard players. The policy of Peterborough, the way they recruit, the impressive youth academy and the way they promote players through it, I don't doubt that they will succeed. But straight away... I don't think so. I think it's certainly going to be a project that needs time. Burton Albion in seventh. Now, am I crazy? I don't, I don't know what I'm thinking, to be honest with you, but what a town around this could be for Burton. But why can't they get seventh? Dino's done a fantastic job so far in keeping them in the division last year, and the summer recruitment has been on point. 
been fantastic. The only negatives for Burton are losing Johnny Smith and Jerry Taylor. However, with signings like Cole Stockton, Jamal Blackman, Jake Caprice, Ryan Sweeney, Harper, Mason Bennett, if they can keep him fit, all as the marking, makings of a team aspiring to get to the playoffs. And I'm really excited to see how Burton do this season. They'll either be a flop or they'll be a top. Um, I, I think I've just made that one up. Anyway, I think they're going to have a fantastic season. Coming out on 7th, it's probably one of the worst finishes, of course. You know, that they'll be heartbreak by just missing out. But what a turnaround that would be uh, for, for Burton Albion. What a season it could be as well. 6th place, I've got Blackpool. Neil Critchley's returned to Bloomfield Road and I think it's a perfect fit and appointment. Yes, he shouldn't have left in the first place to join Gerard at Villa. But his first season at Blackpool and management was one to remember, with it being unprecedented times with no fans in the ground and when they made it to Embley only 9,000 were in attendance for that day. But Blackpool fans won't care either way. It was a success at Blackpool who he beat in Michael Appleton at Wembley. And that's why they find themselves in League One again with that signing, but with that appointment. Sorry, but signings like Pennington and uh, and Morgan, Albie Morgan, Norburn, Joseph, as well on top of what they already have, is the markings of a very good playoff team. And a few more additions in there, I think I'd be more comfortable in putting Blackpool into the top six. They've also got a very good playoff record as well. Oxford United, now if you thought the Burton turnaround was some turnaround, then Oxford, I know they've been in the playoffs for quite a few seasons now under Carl Robinson, but last season the team that placed 19th in the League 1 would be jumping up 14 places if I got this prediction right. I love what Liam Manning's building, maybe I'm a bit too reactionary to the momentum of keeping them up and the playoff uh, and not the playoff, the pre-season they've, they've had some good results, I think they beat QPR 5-0 yesterday, Ruben Rodriguez, that's, that's an impressive signing, Jordan Thornley as well, Mark Harris, the, no massive departures either and it's a stable solid team from like say what Carl Robinson built and I think Manning will return to his first season with MK form and I can't wait to see how Oxford performed this season. Fourth, I've got Charlton, they've been unstable for far too long Charlton and they've been in League 1 for far too long. With Dean Alden, he's building something and he needs time, but he has also been given the resources with some of the league's best signings in Alfie May, Kamara and Isted. Eden obviously got promoted with Blackburn a few years ago and proven at the level. Terry Taylor, playoffs is simply a requirement for Charlton and I think they will achieve it. Third, I've got Portsmouth for another massively underperforming team in the league won the last few seasons and yes, you know, maybe it's Maybe maybe it's a bit too optimistic looking at Portsmouth from an outsider looking in. I'm really interested and intrigued. They're getting the business done quick. I'm impressed with how the club looks to be trying to do things quickly and efficiently. Um, again, like I say, playoff is a requirement. Starting slow may occur with John Massinho hinting, um, but that might be the case with so many new signings, his style of playing, trying to get that across. But even if they do, I think they'll come up with. The good style of play that he'll employ, it'll be intriguing. Signings such as Regan Paul, Gavin Wright, uh, Scully, all strength and pumping massively. And good signings such as Sparkle, Sadie, Stevenson as, as well, you know, a bit of an outsider shot there from Forest Green. All had great ingredients to a pot of promotions due. Top two, let me know yours in the comments down below. We've got to the stage where we know who our top two are, who's going to be winning the league. Let me know your 1 to 24 in the comments down below. Second place, I've got Derby County. Paul Warren will guide Derby to promotion one way or another, I'm sure of it. But like many clubs, it's a requirement that they get out of the division. All of the signings so far are all defensive-minded. Sonny Bradley being my pick of Dean Cummings, of, of course, the reputation, but also he's a fantastic defender who can get his head on a lot of corners. Um, and Kane Wilson's a close second. Fantastic signing uh, with that one. But the key area Derby need to improve on, especially with McGoldrick um, moving on to Notts County, is the forward areas. I'm not sure Washington and Collins can get 20 goals a season, but they can all chip in and surely they will be promoted. Surely. The, you know, the, the squad they've got is just fantastic, but will the pressure get to them like they did perhaps last season? So that means in first place I have got Bolton Wanderers. I think Ian Evitt's a fantastic manager. The way he's turned Bolton around from bottom of League 2, going into um, 
this season requiring championship football is incredible, the style of play. It's effective but very easy on the eye as well. The reason for Pip Derby to top spot for me, they have goal scorers, which Derby don't. You know, when you look at Dion Charles, you've, they've got a great spine, great defensive unit. Um, the, the, the difference is, I think, that the risky pick with this one is that Baxter, can he replace Trafford? I think he probably can with the recruitment and the way they sign players, but it's still very unknown with him. But the spine, you know, you've got Santos, Dempsey, Dion Charles, but you've also got incredible players between the spine as well. So for me, Bolton just pipping Derby to the title. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do your 24 to 1. It's definitely an intriguing League One season. Is it better than last season? Is the quality better? I'm not sure. I think it could be a bit more competitive than the quality in the division, but it's definitely an exciting one. Um, correct me if I've got some things wrong. Again, let me know your thoughts going into a season with your owners as well because they can decide how you feel and going into a season. But if, I, if I'm wrong about your club, correct me if I'm wrong. If you're offended, I'm sorry. Those are my predictions. It's just a bit of fun. But like I say, if you're that offended, let me know your predictions and don't hide behind your name. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Like the video if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Have a good one.